How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another brand new Rugby Muscle podcast. This is episode 107, and it's going to be a Q&A edition. Um, I'm your host, as always, TJ, and in this episode, it's going to be a solo episode, as I like to call them, where it's just me kind of rambling. I think things get, like, a little bit weird, because it's just me sat here talking to a computer screen or a, an empty mic, and yeah, it gets a bit weird for me, but it should be good for you. It should be an informative listen. Um, like I say, it's a Q&A edition. The questions have come from our Rubby Muscle Athletes group. This group was originally designed for us to support guys that have bought our programs and whatnot, but now it's just a bit of an open group, and you know, if you do have a program, you will get automatically added to that group, and you can ask all the questions there, because obviously a program is no good if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. But yeah, just search for Rugby Muscle Athletes on Facebook. You can join nearly 500 other rugby players who enjoy a bit of gym, a bit of making themselves better. And uh, yeah, those questions are there, and I'll get to them after we do the most important thing of every podcast. Yes, yeah, the fact of the week. So... This week's fact is just going to be bouncing off the top of my head, and I think it's quite appropriate for me to say it because I have major, major leg doms, uh, delayed onset muscle soreness. My legs are killing me, and more, more than just my legs, it's my hamstrings and my glutes. And what I've tend to find is that you can have a sore chest, you can have a sore back, you can have sore traps, you can have sore biceps and triceps, all of that stuff, but nothing gets you in a more irritable mood than having sore glutes and sore hamstrings. It just really, I don't know, every time I get leg doms, it kind of pisses me off a lot. And um, to relate this to a training program sort of situation, this is why we don't do those crazy leg days where uh, if you've seen the video of um, Leonardo DiCaprio on Wolf of Wall Street when he's taking too many of, uh, what drugs does he take? Is it Molly's? Um, hmm. I don't know what drug it is. Usually I have someone that might look it up and answer, but I don't know. When he takes those drugs and he, ca- and he uh, crashes the car and he can't walk and he's doing all of that sort of stuff, uh, yeah. We don't advocate for those sorts of leg days. I don't think getting into that sort of mood is ever going to help anyone. Um, not only is it, like, yeah, getting you in a bad mood, but it's also really, really unnecessary. So that's why we advocate advocate pretty much all the time doing full body workouts. And speaking of things that are being advocated, <clears throat> you can win three free months of world-class strength and conditioning delivered straight to your phone by advocating us, as in the Rubbing Muscle Podcast, um, by going to iTunes, giving us a five-star review, um, I'm not going to read that one star review, the one one star review we got. I'm not going to read that, but I am going to read David Moorcroft because he is the winner this week. He has won three, nope, free three months. Can you even tell that I pronounce that differently? Free three months. Nope, other way around. Three free months of world class and conditioning delivered directly to his phone for his review. Thank you so much, David Moorcroft. If you can just reach out to me either via email or Insta, slide into the DMs, whichever method you use to get in contact with me, you will get your free months of uh, Team Rubby Muscle. And why not read the review right now? He said, I don't normally leave reviews online. I mean, that's the thing. That's why we're trying to give you free stuff to give a review because most people don't. You only give a review when you've had a really bad experience, I find. So we're trying to give you an incentive to give a review of a good experience, aka this podcast he says i don't normally leave reviews online but i felt like i have to for tj and the rubby muscle podcast this has been an absolute gem of a find for me answering many questions i had coming back into playing rugby but also continues to pump out great content continually the way they see when people when i read it's very difficult especially when there are grammatical errors but the way they dive into each topic slash question with so much nuance and context makes it so much more relevant and informative than just prescribing sets, reps, diet plans, quotation marks, perfect program, etc. The most recent pods chatting to others working in the field being a, a particular highlight for me. Very inspiring and informative. Thanks a lot, TJ. Keep up the good work. Thank you, David Moorcroft. Reach out and you will get your free three months of Team Rugby Muscle delivered directly to your phone. 
Now, let's get on to some questions. Uh, I, I made that post on the Facebook group. Again, Rubbing Muscle Athletes, if you want to check it out. And um, yeah, we have a, the number of questions. I'm probably going to answer these over two different podcasts because I, I prefer the shorter podcasts. Because if you end up doing like a 40 minute plus, I know, I know most of them have been like 40 minutes. <laughs> That's not been my goal. My goal has been to do a lot less. But the, we, especially when you get guests on, it's easy to, uh, to, you know, to end up diving into deep stuff and giving a million different contexts and whatnot. And so I feel like when we do that, a lot of the nuances get, get missed, you know, because you, you can't dive in and understand 20 different concepts at the same time. It's better to just to give a good 20 to 25 minutes, maybe 30 minute listen, and then apply what you've just listened to. And then, you know, wait a few days, listen to another one, that sort of thing. That's, that's my thought behind trying to do these uh, shorter episodes. Anyway, so first question we have, and we'll see how far we get. <clears throat> oh, see how many questions we get through. We might just only, I might be able to answer all of them in one. How many questions do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half. <clears throat> so maybe we'll do three on each one. We'll see. Um, so the first one, uh, Richard Brooks asks, how is a sauna and a hot bath now a good recovery tool i think what he's saying is like how comes it's now a new thing and it's a it's a great question brooksy because i'm not really sure either um i think it's because there's been a lot of a push for it on other podcasts like the joe rogan one where we've got like dr Rhonda patrick and um what's his name ben greenfield now those two are the only people that i've really seen like advocate it massively and the thing is with the sauna and the hot bath, the research on it is pretty old and it's, and it's done from what I know on rats and the, it's, it's to do with heat shock proteins, um, and a bunch of other shit, but you don't really need to worry about, I think, I think what's most important when you, um, when we're talking about recovery tools and whatnot is what I always say is what relaxes you. So, um, people are advocating to the, uh, sauna is going to absolutely add gains to your muscles. I just don't really see it. I can see it as a really good way of relaxing um, after after a tough session. It's also good to sweat out um, a lot, especially if you do you know short, intense workouts where you're not sweating too much. Sometimes uh, the benefits of sweating are lost because you're you know you're trying to. It's, it's sweating is a great way to naturally detox the body, and um, I think that could be another good benefit. It's also just good to expose yourself to a bit of heat every now and again. But, you know, we do that by going on a vacation. We bu- we do that by going to a sunny place and chilling out and doing it there. Sometimes um, we overthink these things. And I don't think a sauna and a hot bath is overly good unless it makes you feel great. Or we can also look at it from the flip side where it doesn't make you feel great, but it's sort of like a, a self-discipline type of thing. And that sort of relates to me with um cold showers i've done what's the date today i've done i started cold showering every single morning at the first of march it's now march 27th and yeah i haven't been doing this because it's some sort of advanced strategy to boost my testosterone or do anything crazy i've been doing it because it's just something that uh, i know is going to be tough but I know it's going to be doable. And if I can do that first thing in the morning, every single day, sort of sets my stool out to um, say, hey, if I've done this already, what else can I endure and what else can I push myself to do? And I know it's a bit wacky, but I mean, that's the sort of person I am. And probably it's the sort of person that you are because you're listening to a podcast about how to use the gym to make you a better rugby player. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, Overall, I think... So it's it's overhyped. Well, there's no real solid science saying it's going to add um, too much to recovery. Again, it's nice to relax. Um, it's not going to add too much to muscle hypertrophy. It's a good sort of theory, but you know, if we're talking about drug-free, um, just normal, regular dudes going into the gym, like you know, spending 20 minutes every single day to maybe, maybe, maybe add like half a pound every year of muscle, you got to think of a trade-off. If you hate it. Don't bother, about it. but if you do, if you do enjoy it, like, yeah, it's a good thing to it's you know add it in. We used to do it all the time in Poland. We used to go to a sauna after every single game, 
or after every single game, after every single practice that we had, we'd go in the sauna and uh, it was weird because everyone went in there naked and being a British guy, I wasn't really used to it. And now I go, you know, sometimes I work out at health clubs here in the States and all I see is old man package. Not a good thing. And if I go into the, uh, actually, if I go into a sauna in like a regular athletic club or, or a 24-hour fitness or any of that, um, it's not really relaxing unless it's empty because usually I'll go in there and then I'll be pissed off because some other bro just comes in and starts doing push-ups pointlessly in the fucking thing. Uh, funny story, actually. Did I say this on the podcast the other week? There was a dude who was sat uh, on, in a sauna a few a few seats down from me and he was like sat on the, the top part he was sat on the, the higher bench and and then he started you know he was doing push-ups he was trying to do a workout and then he started doing squats on the ground then he started doing squats on the higher bench and he just fucking smacked his head this dude smacked his head so hard on the roof and then just sat right back down as if nothing had phased him and no one it was just me and him um and i was listening to sort of a calming meditation type of app <laughs> but Dude, that threw me off so much. And yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's a really relaxing thing, but if you enjoy it, go ahead and do it. Um, Next question. Andrew Herbert asks, getting over that first 10 minutes in a game, I feel like I'm always hitting the wall in the first 10 minutes. After that, I'm fine, but I want to come out of the gate as strong as the finish when you're digging deep in those last five minutes. It seems harder to do the latter than the former. I've tried nutrition, headspace, ETC, but when the whistle blows, I feel like I'm running in the mud trying to catch my breath like I'm exhausted. Yeah, that's a, it's a really good point. Um, and I think like you can, you can do the perfect pre-workout protocols and do all that sort of stuff. Primers are really good to do like either the night before a game or the morning of a game if it's a late afternoon kickoff. Um, we've, we've covered that in previous episodes. Um, but I think that's to do with your team's warm-up. So... I now coach a, I'm a head coach of a men's club over here and I make sure that the last thing we do before we have like a literally like a one minute team huddle before a game is fucking smash each other because you're, that's what you're about to do. So why are you not preparing for that? You know what I mean? It's not, um, you know, it's not a case of trying to avoid injury or anything like that, like that at this point, because we're about to do it for 80 minutes. So I like to do a good one to two minutes of, um, like a big full contact bash. I usually get um, a group of four with the ball, trying to beat a group of three without it. And they're literally five, maybe seven meters apart. And we just smash into each other, win a ruck, next group goes. And rather than hit soft pads, I don't think it's, it replicates it very well. We just do full on bosh because you've got to be prepared for that game. There's nothing worse than getting ready for a kickoff, um, especially someone that is chasing that kickoff or someone that's catching that kickoff. And that being the very first bit of contact you do. So that's what I would advise. If your team coach isn't like doing that, then pull a couple mates aside and just just smash each other a little bit. Get yourselves ready for that impact. I find that's the best way to do it. Um, Other than that, um, it's also key where, and I I found this at the higher level you play, it, it exists a lot more, is when you go into the locker rooms or the change rooms or the sheds, the sheds, bro, if you go into the sheds off before, uh, after the warm up, before the game, sometimes you're like you're in there for ten minutes, and by which time, like you've already flattened out a little bit, and I think that is not like beneficial for you as a player. I think it's a, a better idea to sort of at least right before kickoff have a bit of a hit out, or at least have a few sprints just to get the system firing, so that the first bit of you know intense activity that you do after a ten minute break isn't the fucking game. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, on another note I, I guess this is a bit of a tangent but I think it's a, a point that needs to be made I also believe the same thing should happen if you have like a long extended half time break um, I see it all the time where guys have a half you know where teams have a half time break they spend 10-15 minutes doing nothing and by which time especially in like colder weather um, situations they've they've cooled down and then, then they're not ready to really smash someone again it's their first bit of contact in a while and they're a little bit flat and so those first five to ten minutes are crucially important in a game they can really dictate you know if you can get that momentum on your side momentum is a definite thing in sports if you can get that momentum on your side you're going to be um, setting yourself up to have a really good performance and hopefully come away with a win and so yeah in summary it is a good idea to make sure that you've got your caffeine sorted or your 
you know, your pre-workout or getting some nice fast burning carbohydrates in, you know, and do all that sort of stuff. But if it's just the first 10 minutes that you're really struggling with, I think that's what it is. You've got to get your head into the game before the game sort of actually starts. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and yeah, that wraps it up. Next question we have is from Lachlan. He asks, would you train in brackets, gym slash fitness ETC, I guess he means rather than like rugby train, for league differently than union, um, even if you're a similar position? It's a great question, actually, and it's a question I do deal with a lot because it doesn't seem to be a lot about uh, rugby league or rugby league, as I like to call it, um, strength and condition out there. There is a couple of things out there, but I think they're not very good quality, and so I, I like to shed some light on this, although... I would I would advocate that I'm not an expert on this because I've dealt with a few rugby league players, but it's it's not my bread and butter. And I'll I'll, I'll humbly say that you know that is the case. If if I had a you know if I do have some one on one clients, I will look at their their game. I will look at uh, what how we need to prepare as best we can. <clears throat> but for the most part, it's not that's not what this rugby muscle podcast is about. This is about uh, true rugby, aka rugby union. Um, aka the game that the the whole world plays as opposed to north of England and Australia. Shots fired. Um, but to answer the question, yes, they're, 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 I, I would say absolutely they're very different games. There is a lot more running in rugby league, like a lot more. I think as we've discussed, like up to 97% of rugby union is spent either walking or jogging incredibly slow or standing still. Excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to get out this burp. Whereas rugby league, you know, every single tackle, you've got to get 10 yards back and then you've got to then go 10 yards or so forward to try and close that defensive line. Defend, defending in rugby league is absolutely exhausting. But attacking, it's it's a lot more walking because you just start, like, they, they you know, a lot of teams will use those first four phases to... Uh, hit up and 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 have their backs or have a few people recover if you've had a real tough defensive effort and it, it and also the ball in play or the ball is in play a lot more in rugby league so i would say that there's a lot more of a um a higher sort of aerobic demand it, it, leaning into a bit of a lactic demand because you'll go for you know two minutes consecutively and then you'll get a break um, I'd also say there's a difference in the fact that in rugby league, you can do the interchange, right? So you can go off, take a 10 minute breather, come back in. That doesn't happen in rugby union. Um, although I don't think it really happens for either, either sport if you're a winger. Um, so actually, if we answer this question as a winger, then I would actually change. <laughs> so in general, there there are definitely big bigger fitness uh, differences or di- different demands that require training differences. But as a winger, I'd actually argue that most of your stuff is supposed to be you know you're working on your speed and you're working on your agility. And depending on what sort of winger you are, I think though that would be one of the few positions where you would actually set share a very similar uh, training style, which would be a lot of speed a lot of power and a lot of top end speed, which is not something that we do too much with sort of the other positions because rarely in, in rugby union, and you've heard myself and Alex both say that rugby union is mostly played in a 10 meter box. And I'd say the same thing for rugby league, but actually for wingers in both sports, top end speed, you know, 50 yard, 80 yard sprints is actually going to make a big difference for you as a player because if you can chase down kicks, it's a really important part of the game. If you can make the outside break and not get caught, it's a really important part of the game. And you can really stand out for, as a winger from having a really good top end speed. Obviously, acceleration is still going to be key, but I would work a lot of uh, top end speed as a winger or a back three. You know, fullback would I would also include in that a lot more than the other positions. Okay, where are we at? All right, we're going to wrap this podcast up here. So hopefully you guys found that uh, informative. Hopefully that answered those questions really well. Um, Again, you can win free, no, three free months of world-class rugby strength and conditioning delivered directly to your phone. All you have to do, and this promotion is only going to go on once a week, every week until the end of April. Um, All you have to do is go ahead and go to iTunes and give us a five-star review, and type up a little something. If you don't type up a little something, I can't see your name. 
So I won't be able to give you I won't be able to give you a prize or tell you that you won because I don't know who the fuck you are. So type up a few words, say how much you love the podcast. Um, again, say whatever you uh, give give us some good feedback as well because then I can sort of adjust this podcast and make sure that we are tailoring it to you guys that are listening and that you guys can get the best out of it. But for now, we'll finish this podcast here and we're going to answer the next few questions on the next one. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure that you're subscribed so that you can get every single future episode delivered directly to your phone without any sort of hassle whatsoever. If you'd like to win some cool free stuff, then you can go ahead and go give us a five-star review, ideally on iTunes, but you can use whatever podcasting service you do to give us a five-star review. Right now, we're giving away a three a free three-month subscription to Team Rugby Muscle. That's our flagship strength and conditioning program where you can get world-class strength and conditioning delivered directly to your phone so that you can make the most amount of progress in the simplest way possible. And last but not least, you can download 50 free conditioning sessions just by visiting rugby-muscle.com. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and we'll see you in the next one.